If there's one thing we can all agree on, it's that there is nothing worse than today's content. From bloated blockbuster movies that are nothing more than an excuse to cram a bunch of CGI and pro-mainstream propaganda down people's throats, to today's pop music, which is nothing but a bunch of beats and melodies and rhythms and, and chords. However, there's actually some content that's even worse than the garbage that the media is shoving down our throats today. Public domain cartoons. They're uh, full of hack jokes, uh, bad music, dated drawings. Uh, in fact, many of them don't even contain any Marvel or even DC superheroes. So of course, the mainstream is going absolutely nuts about the public domain cartoon you can't shoe a horse fly. You've all seen the fangirls and fanboys going, oh, I love you, can't shoe a horse fly. It's the best content I've ever seen. But, uh, you know, on closer inspection, it really does not hold up between the logical inconsistencies, the crude animation, and frankly, the terrible writing. Uh, we're going to break down today everything wrong with this so-called greatest film ever. You can't to a horse fly. Some main issues were right up the bat. I uh, looked at the credits. I looked at some of the creators behind this and there is that was absolutely no involvement from Stan Lee, Joss Whedon, Epic Games, the creative team be behind the Warhammer franchise. So right off the bat, I'm suspicious. This is probably going to be some kind of woke social justice fest or something like that. Basically intended to pander to the hard left. Even more, I took a look at the kind of description and there was no mention of Deadpool. There was no mention of the sort of Spider-Verse. You know, always a bad sign uh, when kind of looking at a piece of content. And then finally, uh, the rating. Uh, it didn't seem to have any kind of rating. Uh, I only like, uh, you know, content obviously rated R uh, if we're talking about the film world uh, and above. And this didn't even have a rating. So it made me very nervous that uh, it may be, uh, I don't know, uh, PG-13 or below. So let's, anyways, let's take a look. Let's look at the title frame. Uh, it's referring to itself as a classic. A classic should be a term that critics and experts such as myself bestow on uh, on content. You know, stuff like the old uh, PewDiePie vlogs, uh, you know, old school Smosh videos. To me, classic is like stuff from back when YouTube was actually good before they kind of started, you know, pandering to the mainstream. I don't really see how uh, Max Fleischer, Hunky and Spunky uh, productions can be considered classics. You know, Red Flag uh, right there. Max Fleischer, you know, not, not a name I've heard of, which is again, uh, you know, a pretty bad sign because I've pretty much heard of, of everyone uh, from George Washington all the way up to uh, David, who is uh, the guy, he lives uh, I guess two, uh, two doors down from me. You can't shoe a horse fly. Basically, we all know that flies do not wear shoes, so they're trying to sort of go for humor, but we can pretty much guess right now that it's not gonna contain the kind of humor that is actually funny, you know, the kind of stuff uh, that you see in kind of, you know, some of the messed up PewDiePie vids or, uh, you know, some of today's uh, hardcore memes, uh, uh, that kind of thing. So uh, another red flag right here, directed by Dave Fleischer. Uh, you notice that the cartoon was uh, created by Max Fleischer, and this is just an example of the nepotism that these kind of elites uh, employ. It's a sort of a Hollywood uh, conspiracy to keep uh, hardcore edgelords and dank memers uh, like myself uh, out of the industry. All right, so let's take a closer look. We see here is the, the main character in this video is this horse uh, character. Now, a few things about this horse. Uh, it has no uh, superpowers. You know, already I, as a viewer, am tuning out, and now you expect me to watch, you know, another five minutes of this character. So, you know, there's, you know, a huge flaw uh, from uh, practically frame one. It does not have a suit on any kind of uh, adamantium covering. I mean, what we're basically looking at is uh, probably one of the most uninteresting characters uh, ever kind of created by the so-called industry. Now let's get into the dialogue. Uh, what we heard there was horse noises. This is a classic uh, technique that bad writers use to cover up their lack of talent. Basically, they 
uh, don't employ any actual words. They have their characters kind of you do grunts, groans, uh, you know, horse noises that kind of thing. Some people say, well, are they going for you know realism? You know, horses don't talk, but I would say no, they're not going to realism. If you kind of look at the, the overall uh, scene here, this is some of the least realistic animation I've ever seen. There's no kind of evidence of ray traced uh, graphics. It's, it's very flat and two dimensional. Just this kind of sign of, of, you know, taking shortcuts creatively. Here we see textbook example of bad writing. The most interesting thing that can happen uh, in any film is uh, a fight or uh, a, a swear fill rant. In fact, you want to generally have that type of thing right at the top so your audience has someone to root for. You know, when they see a character fighting, shooting, swearing, they know that they're in for an entertaining film. Instead, the creator of uh, this cartoon, Dave Fleischer, decides to open with a nap. Really? You're gonna have the first scene be the characters taking a nap? But I almost feel like I'm being I'm being trolled uh, by Dave Fleischer. And honestly, Dave, if you made this to troll me, bravo. Fortunately, uh, when you see the kind of humor in this, I just don't think that the Dave uh, has a kind of sense of humor to pull off an epic trolling like that. Okay, now uh, this is a, a, a perfect example of uh, a kind of lack of good act structure in a film. Um, basically, uh, this cartoon is about six minutes and we're over a third of the way through and we still haven't established a clear uh, protagonist. I mean, who are we rooting for? You know, is it the fly or is it the horse? On top of that, the uh, notion that a fly would uh, pour a little bit of salt on a horse to eat his hair. Uh, you know, I, I think they were doing this to be funny, but uh, you know, I wasn't laughing. What they're basically trying to do is say, oh, you know, when people eat things, they put salt on it, uh, you know, and it's kind of a, a play on the whole concept of putting salt on your food. But for me, this just doesn't really track because a fly uh, would not have a, a tiny salt shaker. There's just uh, no way they would sort of have the industry to develop glass, metal, the salt mines. It doesn't make any sense. All right, another problem. Uh, when you have a great song that's uh, obscured uh, because they didn't trust the music to sit on its own. I mean, we have this amazing banger of a hit, You Can't Shoe a Horse Fly. Instead of letting it play out, basically they're obscuring the melody with the sound effects of the fly buzzing around, the horse making noises. Unfortunately, another you know, huge, uh, huge ball drop by Dave Fleischer. It just hit me that the, the title uh, contains uh, two puns. Basically, uh, to shoe a horse means to put a shoe on a horse, and then shoe also means to kind of wave something away. And so they're basically saying you can't, can't put shoes on a fly. And then it's a a play on shooing away a, fl a fly, uh, which you can do. So the, the title doesn't make sense. And I want to kind of apologize for not bringing this up at the beginning. I, you know, I heard the title a few times and it didn't, didn't really sink in until now. Uh, and I think that's a mark of a bad title. You know, when you go to see a good movie like Venom, uh, you know, it's called Venom. And you, you know, you know there's gonna be a character called Venom. And when you get a great game like Warhammer uh, Vermintide uh, 2, you know that there will be a, a Vermintide. Uh, and they're not trying to like be overly clever at these titles. For all I could have known, you know, this would have been a video about working at a foot, foot locker. Instead, we're treated to this frankly subpar uh, uh, animation about a about a horse and a and a fly and uh, it, I mean it's it sucks it's it just sucks but I'm gonna I gotta watch the rest of it. If you guys just give me a minute, I'm sorry I am getting a little hungry and I'm gonna go cook some beans. All right, I'm back, for, I'm back from eating the beans. They were, uh, it was uh, just uh, Heinz uh, baked beans, and uh, they, it was okay. I didn't really put any kind of flavoring on them. Also, you know, it's about 9 a.m., so it's, for me, not a standard breakfast food. I know in the UK they might have it with some toast, but I did just eat the beans plain. And uh, also, if I, I'm going to be honest, I did not heat them up, which, you know, sometimes enhances the flavor. But to be honest, I think this is a huge uh, a flaw that the Heinz Corporation needs to kind of look into. The fact that they've created this product that uh, 
once you buy is you know still not really uh, in peak condition unless you go through this whole other elaborate process of taking them out of the can, you know, but putting them in the in the pot, heating the pot. I'm gonna be releasing a vlog soon called uh, Everything Wrong with Cold uh, Baked Beans. All right, uh, the scene where the horse's tail turns into a, a fly swatter. Uh, this is a completely unnecessary. Generally, uh, if you haven't kind of established an origin story for your character, it's not good to just kind of reveal new powers that they have. Uh, you know, of course, there's some room for elements of fantasy, but a horse's tail turning into a fly swatter is a, is a bridge too far for me and the rest of my fellow uh, cineasts. Classic kind of. Uh, played out trope here where the antagonist is defeated, but you know, you know that there is a big portion of the film still left to go So there's obviously no way they're actually gone. So now we have to sit here going. Oh, yeah I'm sure the fly has really been swatted knowing full well that you know the cartoon is nowhere near done and you know once again uh, this is just uh, really testing the audience's patience. Uh, you know, this this film has only been going for a little over four minutes, and we've already seen the characters take two naps. And honestly, if I wanted to watch a film about taking a nap, I'd watch one of the many videos I record with my telescopic lens of my neighbors uh, taking naps. Now, the fly has turned into an electric razor. Uh, this this cannot happen. It would not happen. And again, like I said. You know, of course, we know that these films establish their own rules, but this just would not happen. A fly would not turn into a razor. And this is just one of the many things wrong with this public domain cartoon, is when the fly turns into an electric razor and shaves the horse. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, this scene is lit as hell. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, the horse uh, chasing the fly is absolutely dope, and uh, credit where credit is due to the Fleischer brothers. Uh, it is uh, extremely exciting to watch this horse run around. Unfortunately, they waited till, you know, 80% of the film is over to throw this scene in. Anyways, I'd love to see something do a fan edit where they have the horse chase the fly at the top. We, instead, we've got to sit through four minutes of the horse not chasing the fly, you know, to get to the one great scene. All right, uh, again, we're kind of back to the same issue I had earlier with the salt shaker, but now it's even worse because there is an entire group of flies uh, that now have forks and knives and they're chopping down on the horse. Where did these flies get their forks and knives? This so-called fly-by nightclub that we saw them all come out of. How did they paint the sign? It's too unbelievable that these flies would uh, come out of a, a club for flies uh, and then eat a horse with a fork and knife. So there we have the last scene where the, the big horse uh, kills all the flies and then there's little tombstones and sad music plays for the flies. We've established that these flies are very clever, that they can kind of evade any kind of a horse, uh, that the, whacking them with the tail is not good enough to kill them. Then all of a sudden, you know, Fleischer decides, okay, now the horse can kill the flies. This is just an example of why films are so bad now. And by now, I mean, I guess the last, about, it's probably about 80, 85 years old. And, uh, you know, I don't think any films are ever going to be good. This is why I'm a gamer, because you can write your own stories. And uh, speaking of writing uh, my, my own story, I have a can of these, um, it's called beefaroni. It's kind of like um, macaroni, but with beef. Uh, I'm gonna go eat that. Uh, give me just a second. Okay, I'm back. Uh, you know, same issue I had with the beans uh, with these beefaronis is that the, there's really not much flavor uh, to them. So I guess they're basically relying on you uh, as the consumer to do the work of heating it up. So it kind of tastes kind of more like what we recognize as food. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more of my epic takedowns of everything from films to movies.